order. This is the regular meeting of the Coffee County School Board for August 22nd, 2019. And we appreciate all of you being here tonight. We will begin our agenda tonight with our Pledge of Allegiance, if everyone will stand. Our allegiance pledge tonight will be led by <coughs> our NJROTC, Commander Milka Ramirez and Lieutenant Commander Guadalupe Torres. alongside 
uh, the teachers, God, and help them, God, to educate our children, God. And we just pray now, God, even last year, we know that there were several different things that happened. We had our children, God, that were uh, committed suicide and different things, God. And I just pray this year that none of that happens, God, that we would have a great, successful year, God, that we will go through this year, that our graduating class will do well as they go on to higher levels of education. And, Father, we just give you the praise. We give you the honor and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for having me. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Pastor William. Yes. Thank you for coming tonight awesome. and sharing that invitation with us and okay. supporting Thank our school system. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. much. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you. Good to see you. God bless you. And we have the adoption of the agenda. We do have one amendment. amendment. Yes, if you would amend uh, the agenda, adding a personnel report, report from the personnel director under uh, E or after the consent agenda. Let's see, we'll do that right after the consent agenda which would be <coughs> the item after the consent agenda. New number eight. And that'd be a new number eight. Robin, you got that? <coughs> Please, the board, we need a motion to accept the agenda with the amendment that we discussed. Make a motion to accept the uh, amended agenda. Any discussion? All in favor? Very good. Thank you. All right. We uh, will proceed with our meeting. We'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. We've got a large crowd. Thank you for coming out. A lot of children and employees and parents and grandparents. Thank you for being here. Um, First off, we want to recognize our mission and our vision, our mission of destination graduation for college, career, and life. And our vision is an equitable and excellent education for every student. That's what we're striving for. And it's great seeing all these students here tonight. And uh, look forward to hearing from you. At this time, we're going to proceed with our recognitions. And first is childhood cancer awareness. Do we have the members of the Childhood Cancer Awareness Group here? I think they way could make it come up here. <laughs> yes, ma'am. When I got here, I realized I had on jeans, and I thought, I'm a retired teacher. I don't have that here. <laughs> <laughs> that part's nice. But uh, we want to tell you we appreciate you having us and, and signing this proclamation because we started nine years ago and y'all been on the wagon with us the whole time i mean y'all supported us or the, all the schools have supported us and it's you know it's, it's helped us to, to be the group we are when we started nine years ago our our, our biggest uh, fundraiser was an auction and we held it down in the old uh, powell's building and i think we made like thirteen thousand dollars and we were so excited and we were just beside ourselves and uh, Last year at our auction, which is our main fundraiser, we made over two hundred thousand dollars. So that's how much we've grown. But unfortunately, so have the number of families that we serve. So um, we appreciate y'all's help, and uh, we do the money that we raise stays local. There are some families from adjoining counties that see doctors in Coffee County, and we do try to help those families out. It's hard to turn down a family if they ask for help. But I want to just tell you some of the things coming up this month. We've got, we're selling t-shirts, which you, we've all got on our t-shirts. So these are for sale and this year they're easy to get. All you gotta do is walk into our headquarters, which is the old athletic attic uh, building and it's down there where Taylor Piano Company is. And you can walk in and buy one. Or if you want us to bring a sheet up here and order form and fill it out and you know, we'll pick it up and deliver t-shirts, we can do that. But most people prefer to go down there and they can check the size and all. We've got the uh, armbands for a dollar, which have our little motto on, on them. And uh, the Beta Sigma Phi, they're selling mines like they do every year. And if you purchase those, you can pick those up at the auction. And Friday night, the uh, Ware County game, we will be selling cupcakes. And that's a big fundraiser to 
hence like the cupcake, so that, that works out real good. And then our biggie will be September 27th and 28th. That's the, uh, the silent auction on Friday and the live auction on Saturday night. And uh, if you've never been to the silent auction, you need to just go walk through. We have over 700 items that I hear we're going to have a live donkey <laughs> this year. <laughs> and I'm excited about that. But, uh, but we have everything from puppies to donkeys to, to you know, the yard equipment to work with, uh, gift baskets, jewelry, You're going to the donkeys? We we had a fainting goat one year and everybody said, What's a fainting goat? And I said, Google it. <laughs> you need to see it if you've never seen one. But um and then Saturday night we'll have some big items to auction off and we'll serve dinner and uh, we'll have an auctioneer and just have have a good time. And uh, we, we will be raffling off a, a new golf cart this year. That'll, we'll have those. We've got those tickets, I think, uh, and uh, we'll be selling those. But um, this weekend out at uh, the Wiley Hammock ATV Park, I don't even know where that is, but it's in Broxton. But they're having a function out there, and all the proceeds will go to the childhood cancer group. So they're having some kid-friendly stuff at the beginning of the day, and then. Uh, Saturday night, they're going to have Danny Dawson and a couple other bands, so it's going to be a, a lot of fun. But um, again, like I say, we appreciate all the support y'all give us, and, and it makes us feel good that we feel like y'all got our back and, and y'all are helping us. We really appreciate it. And, we, and I have the proclamation. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, our plan was to read the proclamation and have the board approve the proclamation. So, okay, just hand you want to present it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Board members, the proclamation of the Coffee County Board of Education reads, whereas Douglas Coffee County, Georgia's children are most precious resource and our hope for the future, and whereas 43 <coughs> children per day will be diagnosed with some type of pediatric cancer, and whereas too many families have been touched by cancer and its consequences, and we must work together to control and ultimately defeat this destructive disease and whereas we will strive toward a future in which cancer no longer threatens the lives of our children. Now, therefore, Coffee County Board of Education does hereby proclaim the month of September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and urge all administrators and employees, personnel of Coffee County School System to support our local Childhood Cancer Awareness Group in their efforts to raise funds for research and to increase public awareness of the devastating effects this disease has on children and their families. Families, Together we can. All right, board members, would y'all approve the proclamation? <coughs> I make a motion that we approve the proclamation that Dr. Lee just read. Second. Any discussion? Other than to say thank you very much for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? You were the first spokesman that's ever came and brought around photographer as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And Childhood Cancer Awareness Day for the Coffee County School System will be recognized on September 27th. So for everybody's information, in the Coffee County Schools, we will recognize September 27th as Childhood Cancer Awareness Day. All right. The next item on the agenda is career technical student organization. So do we have a representative from Coffee High School here? Ms. Rhonda Dorsey, our CTA director. Thank you, Ms. Dorsey. Good evening, and thank y'all for um, allowing us to share tables with our students from Coffee High and Coffee Middle School. We have one. Um, first, I would like to announce um, our, we have a area vice president a middle level state vice president, and then we have our uh, TSA secretary for the state of Georgia. So if you three young ladies would come forward. Patel is our Southeast Area Vice President for FBLA. 
and her um, the FBLA advisors that are with us tonight is Brandy Barlow and Deborah Patton. And I believe Deborah will be traveling with Brandy, I mean, excuse me, with Ashley um, throughout um, this year representing us in um, uh, the area, Southeast area, as well as state competitions as well. Lanira um, Barlow, she is our middle level state vice president for FBLA, and Ms. Stodgill, Heather Stodgill, is her advisor at the middle school. So they'll, uh, both of those will be doing a lot of events throughout the year and representing Coffee County while they're doing that. And then we have Samina Patel, she is our Georgia TSA secretary, and her advisor is Mr. Rodney Ragsdale at the high school. And I'm very proud of all of these girls um, and what they represent. And when they go off, I've actually observed them at some events already, and they represent Coffee County very well. So you should be very proud of these three young ladies. show this weekend in Perry and then we have some that are at trainings right now so our advisors are not with us tonight but our two of our uh, three winners are here with us Elena Atkinson if you'll come forward and Leanna Atkinson and Dawson Adams was unable to be with us tonight because he could not get away from college at ABAC so he's not here tonight but I will announce all of their accolades here and they are with us um, I'll start with Elena. She is represented us in agricultural sales with a floral business of her own where she is top four at the state level. She received gold. She will be representing us at the national level in October where she'll do an interview, I believe is correct. Um, and at that point, while they're there, she will be hopefully announced as our national winner, which will be our first for Coffee County. So we wish her luck in representing us. And then Leanna, her project was in specialty crop production where she uh, had a project with sugar cane and syrup production. And she was actually top six in the state of Georgia where she received gold as well. Yes. So these two young ladies did an awesome yes. job with that. Elena's top four in the nation. Leanna's top Oh, I'm six sorry, in nation. The nation. They were top four in the nation, but first in. in um, their project at state. Thank you for that. I knew I was messing that up, but I said I would. But they are at the national level that were fourth and sixth out of all in the nation. Next on the agenda, we have the Mayor's Youth Council. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Juanetta Boulder, City Clerk with the City of Douglas. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to introduce to you all our 2019-2020 uh, Mayor's Youth Council. This is the second year that the city has done this. We're working with some amazing young people. Um, they just did a trip at the Capitol um, about a month ago. Um, they've been doing a lot of community service this summer and still helping. They actually have adopted the Mary Hay Center. So they do uh, community service at Mary Hay Center. Some of our uh, young people are affiliated and working with the team court. The city has a team court. Um, we have it the first Saturdays of each month. Uh, is from 6th grade to 12th grade. So we are looking for kids to be involved in this um, in this uh, project. Um, not only that, this is ninth grade through 12th grade. So starting probably in November, we'll start taking applications. So now I'm going to introduce to you all our Mayor's Youth Council. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Samantha Martin. I currently serve as the junior mayor at the Youth Council. I'm a senior at Coffee High School, and we all thank you for 
invited us. We had one member that wasn't able to make it. His name is Tyrion Wilson, and he is a senior with the Wiregrass Career Academy. Thank you again. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angelique Jackson. I'm a ninth grader at George Washington Christian Campus, and I, I'm also a part of Team Court. Good afternoon. My name is Jolene Debra. I'm a ninth grader at the Freshman Campus, and I participate as a juror as the team. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amelia Crockett. I'm a 10th grader at Coffee High School, and I'm part of this amazing camp, so I'm my family. And I'm also the defense attorney in Tim Court. Thank you for having me. Good evening. My name is Ashton Ace. I am in the 10th grade at Coffee High School, and I'm also a juror on Tim Court. Good evening. My name is Helena Escobar. I am a senior at Coffee High School. I'm the 2019-2020 Mayor Pro Temp for the City of Douglas Native Chief Council and a prosecuting attorney with Team Court. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jessica Suarez. I am a senior at Coffee High School. I am 17 years old. I am one of the commissioners for the Mayor's Youth Council. I also am a prosecutor in Team Court. And thank you all for having us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Candace Pace. I am a senior at Coffee High School. I am also a member of the 2019-2020 Douglas Mercy Youth Council, and I also participate as an attorney um, team court. And I would like you all to know that I'm very, very glad to be a part of this amazing group right here. And thank you all for having us. I just want to say that with our team court, uh, Lanira Barlow, she is our uh, clerk of courts for team court also. appreciate all that you're doing and getting involved in the community. Thank you very much. At this time, we will recognize our new teacher incentive award. Teaching in fifth grade, 
And at the time, Dr. Christina Tucker was his principal, but tonight, Miss Amy Vining, the new principal at Eastside, is here. And Dr. Tucker stated, Mr. Whitley realizes that students learn by doing and consistently provides opportunities for experiments and hands-on learning with his students. So I have a certificate for you, and each one of these um, recipients tonight will receive a, a certificate, but in their August payroll, their August, we don't get a check, but in their payroll deposit, they will get $500. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> From Indian Creek Elementary, Miss Hall Hallie Taylor, who finished her second year of teaching in first grade. She creates an excitement for learning by teaching grade level standards through project based learning, music, movement, and technology. Mm. From Coffee Middle School, Brittany Farabo. <laughs> she just finished her third year of teaching. And her administrator stated, over the past three years at Coffee Middle School, Mrs. Farabo has demonstrated exceptional classroom management, provided impressive instructional performance, displayed deep understanding of sixth grade social studies curriculum, and has, has shown school leadership qualities in and out of the classroom. And her principal is here tonight, Ms. Cherry Berry. And his principal will be on the <laughs> Mr. Patton just finished his third year of teaching in the science department. <coughs> I think this year he's teaching all biology. Um, Mr. Mrs. Dorsey stated, Mr. Patton is phenomenal at connecting with his students and his talents teaching simple concepts as well as advanced concepts are truly superior. So we are Thankful for all of our teachers in our Coffee, Coffee County school system because they make a great impact on our students every day. But it, we're especially thankful for new teachers who come in and just really shine. And we just want to, we recognize four every year and two at the elementary level and two at the secondary level. So if you will, let's give these another <laughs> about and with our faculties about 
are the 2018-2019 year in review, and then also the milestones and academic achievement, as well as some, a few other things that we talk about with our faculty. But I just wanted to hit on these items with the board and just celebrate with the board our accomplishments from last year because we had a great year last year. It really was a good year for the school system. 2018-19 uh, celebrations and one thing about leading and, and about working in an organization, you do need to take time to celebrate your accomplishments because it's tough. It's these teachers work hard, everybody works hard, our bus drivers and, and our police officers that work with us and all of our staff administrators and fair pros and just everybody works hard and so we do need to take some time and celebrate. So last year we uh, got our advanced data accreditation, our five-year accreditation, so we are accredited for the next five years and I do want to say we had a glowing report. We've talked with the board about that already but we had a very successful accreditation visit and they were really blown away by our school system and what we're doing. So. Next item to celebrate was the fact that the board was recognized by the Georgia School Board Association as a exemplary board. So the Board of Education was recognized at the annual conference as an exemplary board. Also, the Coffee County School System was recognized as the State of Georgia Charter System of the Year. So uh, at the annual uh, charter system conference, the, the Board of Education and the Coffee County School System was recognized as the charter system of the year out of 45 charter systems. So once again, something to celebrate. And then locally, we were recognized as a school system by our local Chamber of Commerce and our Economic Development Authority. So at the annual gala that they have, uh, the Coffee County Board of Education and the school system was recognized as the Community Partner of the Year. So exciting things happened last year. Continuing individual school recognitions, we had Ambrose, Brox, Mary Hayes, Nichols Elementary School. They were named 2018 High Progress Schools by the Georgia Department of Education. Westside Elementary School was named a 2018 High Performing School. Ambrose Elementary School, West Green, and Westside were named Beating the Odd Schools by the Department of Education. And Coffee High School was recognized as a AP STEM school and AP STEM achievement school. So Coffee High School was recognized by the Georgia Park of Education. And finally, Coffee Middle School was named a breakout school by the Georgia Association of Secondary uh, Principals. So we had celebrations at the national level with our accreditation, at the state level with the charter system and the GSBA, and then we had uh, recognitions at the local level with the the uh, exemplary board and the uh, uh, chamber partner of the year and then we had school recognition so big year to celebrate and uh, want to make sure that we do that with our board and with our community thank you now how did we do academically we know those were some of the recognitions that our system received and schools received but how did we do academically that's our core business last year we did a book study with a group uh, on a book that Jim Collins wrote. He wrote a, a book, Good to Great, and then he had another bestseller, Built to Last. And so in his book, Built to Last, he talks about a 20-mile march. And what, what does that mean, a 20-mile march? Back in the early 1900s, there was a race to see who could get to the South Pole first. They had dog sleds, and they had men on foot with the dog sleds, and they, they had two teams that were going to race to the South Pole. And one of the teams took and went as far and as fast as they could. They went 60 miles a day, 70 miles a day, as far and as fast as they could. And then they'd camp and they'd rest. And sometimes they'd sleep a little later because they'd go a little farther. And sometimes they'd go a little farther and, and, and just go as hard as they could. And then the other team went 20 miles a day, 20 miles a day, 20 miles, set camp, rest, 20 miles, set camp, rest. Now the team that actually just went as far and as fast as they could they actually perished. The, the guys who were on that team, many of them actually died and, and didn't even make the trip. And then on the other team, the group that went 20 miles a day, 20 miles a day, 20 miles a day, they actually made it to the South Pole. So we talked with our staff about this 20 mile march concept. Keep a steady pace, 20 miles per day, every day, focus on consistent long-term performance 
concrete, clear, intelligent, rigorously pursued performance mechanisms. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those gains each year. Our principals at our schools, they talk to their staff about it. At the district level, we talk about it. And uh, we just want to get consistently a little bit better every day. And that's what we're working towards. So how did we do last year academically? In early reading, we looked at third grade reading level based on the Georgia Milestones Assessment reading status and this is third graders reading at grade level and you'll see back in 1516 we weren't satisfied when 71 percent of our students were at grade level and then we had 29 percent that weren't so as you see we made improvements in 1617 improvements in 1718 and then this past year we're at our best level yet with 80 percent of our third graders reading at grade level and we still have that 20 percent but you see each year we're making making progress and making gains so that's what we want, that 20 mile march. The next slide shows the end of grade assessments. Now this is combining English, science, math, and social studies. So this is an aggregate of all those milestone scores. And if you look at the top section, you'll see in blue, that's the highest performing students. And if you look back over time, each year we've increased the highest performing students. And then if you look at the bottom, that's the lowest performing area, and you'll see each year we've decreased the lowest performing students. So that's exactly what we want. That's what we talk about with the principals. If we can get a little bit better each year, if we can get a little bit better along the line, that's what we want. That's what we see happening there. Now this chart really defines the improvement we're seeing. You'll see back in 14, 15, end of grade assessments, grades three through eight, you'll see we have 33.7% of those highest two levels. This is the highest two levels. That's where we want our kids to be, is the highest two levels. And you'll see we've gone from 33.7% at the highest level back in 14, 15, to 40.5% in 18, 19. So once again, that consistent improvement each year. And last year, we saw tremendous gains. Going from 17, 18 to 18, 19, uh, that's really phenomenal games, and, and we need to give our teachers a hand. They worked hard, and I want to give our teachers a hand. They've worked hard, and our kids, our students are working hard. Now, this is the high school level, math, science, social studies, language arts. You'll see we've increased the highest performing group. We've gone from 4.7% in the highest performing, and then to 7.7% in the highest performing this past year. And once again, this is the four content areas combined. And then you'll see the lowest level, we've gone from 37.7% to 23.7%. So a significant increase in the lowest performing group in Coffee County. So we're really excited about those results. This next slide shows it even better. Uh, in 14, 15, we had 20, only 27.1% of our students were in those highest two levels. And this past year, we were at 40.5% in the highest two levels. And if you notice the growth from 17 to 18, that's why I say last year academically, we talk about teaching and learning being our core business. That's why we exist, teaching and learning. All right, that, that's why we're here, is teaching and learning. You see last year, our teachers did a phenomenal job. Our students did a phenomenal job. We gained five percentage points at grades nine through 12 in those assessments. So tremendous year. What are the areas do we want to look at? Because we don't just want to look at test scores. That's not, we're not just about test scores. But I did take all the individual tests and I thought, well, how can you look at this another way? All right? We had 24 areas that we tested in. And we showed improvement over last year in ninth grade literature, algebra one, geometry, biology, physical science, US history, third grade ELA, fourth grade ELA, all the way through eighth, eighth grade ELA, third, that's English language arts. Third grade math, we showed improvement. Fourth grade math, fifth grade math, seventh grade math, eighth grade math, all the way through fifth grade science, eighth grade science, eighth grade social studies. We showed improvement in 20 out of 24 areas, which is tremendous. Once again, our teachers did a great job. We improved in 20 out of 24 areas. That, that's all we can ask for. I mean, that, that's, that's when we talk with our principal. Of course, we want to get to 100% next year. We want to be 24 out of 24, but to have growth in 20 out of 24 areas is phenomenal. So, great year last year, and, and our folks are focused. Uh, the teachers have been working hard, the students have been working hard, and, 
and we're seeing the results. Uh, SAT scores, 2016, our, our average high school was 994. We rose in, in 18 to 1,009. So we're seeing increases in SAT scores. Advanced placement enrollment, that's the most rigorous classes we offer at the high school. Uh, we've gone from 139 students enrolled in AP classes to 243 this past year. So we're not, we're not just getting easier, and that's why you see it, uh, the stuff go up. It's getting harder, and the scores are going up, and the achievement's going up, and that's what we want. Uh, AP scholars, we see that we've gone from six AP scholars in 2013 to 15 this past year. And those are students scoring a three or higher on three AP exams. Dual enrollment, we've grown from 139 students dual enrolled to 512 students dual enrolled last year. Tremendous growth there. Zell Miller Scholars, we had 12 Zell, and these are the students that have to score a high score on the SAT, and they have to have a high GPA to get Zell Miller. So it's not an easy thing to get Zell Miller. We've gone from 12 in 2013 to 35 last year. So a tremendous number of AP scholars, and, and our high school folks have done a tremendous job, middle school folks preparing them, and our elementary folks preparing them, both those groups, to, for that type of achievement to happen. So we're real excited about that Zell Miller Scholar. And then work-based learning. We challenged our work-based learning group to grow that group who's working and uh, during school, and we've gone from 85 to 111 in, in 17. And I want to say our numbers are closer to 150 last year, but we don't have those numbers on this slide. But we've grown the work-based learning also. Now, dual enrollment at the dual enrollment at the high school, we've had 13 high school teachers step up, and they teach high school coursework and college coursework. So our high school teachers really rose to the challenge last year, and we had 13 that were willing to do dual enrollment for us. And uh, because of that, we had 565 students in the fall who were duly enrolled, and we had 534 students in the spring who were duly enrolled. So those are impressive numbers. And we, and we kind of challenged uh, ourselves last year in the high school to, to raise the number of, of dual enrollment enrollees at Coffee High School, and they rose to the challenge and really got the numbers up, and we're seeing more opportunities for our young people. So. And then graduation rate, that's our mission, destination graduation for college, career, and life. You'll see we're at 82.8% graduation rate, and uh, the state average was 81.6. So we're graduating a uh, higher percentage of students than ever before in Coffee County. And that's our mission. That's what it's all about. So uh, thank you, board members, for empowering uh, our teachers and our staff to do the kind of work that they're doing. And I think with everybody working together, and, and trying to do the best that we can possibly do, we're seeing results. And so I want to just uh, present that report to the board. That's our milestones report for this year. All right. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, we have our consent agenda which is the uh, 2019 July minutes from the board meeting in July. And then we have the June 27, 19 board meeting minutes that were amended. We also have out of state travel. We have a group, a choir group that'll be going to Jacksonville, Florida. And then we have a, another group, the ROTC, was it? No, it was the FFA going to they are going to Indianapolis, that's right. Uh, the Tax Digest, this is probably uh, one of the, the largest issues tonight in tonight's meeting, if you will. Uh, this is the tax levy that the board will be approving, and, and this is a, a good thing, that we will be taking the rollback, which means the uh, school board will be lowering taxes, the millage rate, in uh, Coffee County, so with approval of this tax digest, we will accept the rollback and the millage rate will be rolled back uh, from 16.036 to 16.032. Actually, that millage rate, that's what it rolled back this year, but let's back up to when we started this thing. Our millage rate was set at what, 16.214? 
Yes, sir. And over the last six years? Yes, sir. You've reduced it. It's rolled back to 16.032 now? Yes, sir. That's exactly right. All right. CHS heating and air system, we're asking the board to approve phase one, the closing documents for phase one of the heating and air. We're asking the board to approve the annual training plan for board members. Uh, this plan will allow board members to receive 21 hours of credit for training, required training, and this will exceed uh, the amount that is required, but will allow the board to be eligible for the exemplary board award to the Georgia School Board Association also. Uh, Coffee County 21st Century Community Grant. We had uh, Michael Bull Brown here earlier and he presented the, the evaluation report and it's, it's a very positive report on the 21st Century program here in Coffee County with the Boys and Girls Club. So a good report. And with that, board members, I, I would ask for approval of the consent agenda. A motion to accept the consent agenda? Yeah, we accept the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. President. Second? Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chalmers. Any discussion? Oh, yeah, even though it's not on the consent agenda, will you get over the financial stuff real quick? You must tell it, and we're not including it in this. Yes, sir. Before we get on somewhere else? Yes, we can, we can pull that up. Uh, the work session we discussed, the tentative financials and, and they are not going to be approved by the board tonight because we've not officially closed out the FY19 books therefore this financial report would not be uh, asked to be approved by the board but uh, Miss Yon you want to describe the financials? Yes sir this is a tentative um, estimate of where our fund balance will be as of July 31st, 2019, based on our tentative um, ending balance for fund um, equity for June 30, it was $14,275,625.80. So now this figure, you know, could go up a bit. I don't see that it will go down, but it, you know, could go up through the closing process. Um, the end of the month for July, based on the beginning fund balance as we estimated here, will show fourteen million two hundred thirty-eight thousand six hundred seventy dollars and thirteen cents. And the East Plus revenue for the month was what it, was the number? It was five hundred and seventeen thousand and twenty-eight dollars and forty-three cents. So that's up as well. That's up as well. Yes, sir. It appears that people are spending money in coffee mm -hmm. county. Uh, so, I like this. Yep. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Very good. Thank you. All right. At this time, we've amended the agenda to have a report uh, from the personnel director. Ms. Clay. <coughs> I don't, as far as an official report, that's not what I have. I thought it would be best just to explain the process of, of how um, we post vacancies in the school system. I will go back. In 2014, we purchased um, Apple Track, which is a frontline product. It's all web-based online. So when we have a vacancy, whether it's um, a replacement for someone that resigned or a new position, then I post that vacancy with the job description on the website. It's also sent out throughout the district to all users. And if it's a certified position, it's put on Teach Georgia that goes across the nation that anybody can see the vacancy that we have. They can search by content or by school. So folks go out there and apply for the position. The principals go out and they review all of the applications that are out there for the position that's posted. They review, uh, decide, who they want to interview, and then they have their interviews. They make a recommendation to Dr. Lease. They submit their paperwork, obviously, to our office. They recommend to Dr. Lease, and he brings it to you um, at a school board meeting for approval. 
That, that is basically how, how we do it. Um, I do not provide any information as far as you need to interview this one, this one, and this one. I have never done that. It is up to the principal. It's very transparent that they can interview who they would like. So what are you saying that um, that the principals are uh, the ones that just go through all of the applications? Usually folks apply for a position, a specific position. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to interrupt, but also there are folks in there, they can search by certification. People can apply any time with our school district. There doesn't have to be a vacancy. Um, I spoke with a young lady today that's moving to our area in early childhood and I said, I don't have anything, you don't have anything, but you're welcome to apply if something opens up and it stays out there in a pool of applicants for a year. So I'm wondering, um, why is it that the minorities um, doesn't get the interviews? Is it because of the principals decide that they, um, you know, do not want to pull in the application from uh, minorities or uh, uh, what? Ms. Wilkerson, I don't know how they would even know that because on the application, you're not allowed to ask race and sex. They don't know that. They see names and they I say can, information. Yeah. I can look at a lot of applications and tell who um, um, uh, the race of a lot of people. If I, I see uh, Shaquanda, I think automatically that's a black girl. If I see Sally Ray, I think that's a white girl. You know, so um, a lot of these things, um, you know, these applications, you know, you can tell by um, the names of the race. And then it's another thing that um, we have a question um, in the back about um, who determines um, the one that is more qualified with the same credentials. If, if you and I both have uh, master degrees, right. um, who decides um, which one of us are more qualified to where I just so happen to have to work as a paraprofessional with the same degree that you have and you work um, and get paid uh, certified with the provision of um, getting certification. You know, neither one of us have a, a you know, certified teaching degree. Right. But um, why is it that just so happened that the majority of minorities always receive the paraprofessional pay, but we all mm -hmm. have the same uh, degree? And sometimes, um, you know, you might have some that has a bachelor degree, and I just might have a master's. Mm -hmm but we neither one have a certification of teaching. So what determines that you are more qualified with a bachelor's degree than I am with a master? The principals look at the experience that the individual has if they have a background such as in special education. If um, someone has worked with special needs students in, in the outside sector, uh, I had someone come to see me yesterday from Unison that has experience with severe and profound children. And I actually said, I, I wish she had come to me sooner. We've had several vacancies there. But I've made that connection with her and have explained what tests she would need to take. But if something opened up tomorrow, mm -hmm. I, I told her to go ahead and apply yesterday that she would be somebody that we consider. But um, we have hired a lot of minorities through alternative certification. Mm -hmm. um, they have gone right into teaching. This past year, there's several that we did promote, or not promote, they moved into teaching that had been a paraprofessional, professional, but not that long. We moved them into a teaching position. Um, the, some of the principals are here, and they some use a committee, and they interview, they have the same questions they ask everybody and they make a decision collectively of who they think will fit the position the best. Well, one thing kind of um, struck me then when you said 
um, the lady came to you mm -hmm. uh, and saying, and you say, well, I wish you had came to me earlier and we could have mm -hmm. put you in a position. Right. And so that kind of made me think then that you, um, you know, have a lot to do with the hiring process. If you saying that, I wish you had come to me earlier. And I mentioned in the conversation that I would have, you know, encouraged her to apply so she could interview with the principals. I'm, I'm speaking for the district. I don't mean me specifically. Oh, okay. It's it my might be the, the role. way that you use that. I'm sorry. It's um, my role. It's what it, it made me think that if you had come to me earlier, I could have got you a job. I meant you know, if you came um, to me earlier, I could have helped you in the interview process at the schools because she had qualifications we needed for adaptive special education. That's what I meant. Um, well, I did it. You know, uh, it's something that I asked the board over um, and over and over again that we do need some minorities in this system. And, and I'm thinking that, you know, uh, we, well, I'm knowing that we are qualified. And if we only have a chance to prove ourselves, uh, just like I told Dr. Lease, um, and, and it was uh, bought out when uh, we had a meeting before that, when he came aboard, he wasn't qualified. But he got his stuff together after he got a chance. You know, that he, you know, later on got all the uh, credentials he needed. And he said it him, himself that after they pull it out, he said, so this is nothing that I'm just throwing in his mouth or uh, yours or whatever. But he wasn't qualified when he came on. And so, you know, it's a lot of us that you know, might not be qualified when we come. You know, a lot of people think I was. You know, and hey, I'm the same. I didn't know everything here and still don't. You know, but I felt like I can be a voice for my district. You know, and, um, you know, but if we are uh, given a chance, you know, if, if we just, uh, it, you know, just make it, you know, um, a responsibility that we got to hire some minorities. You know, it will make it better at these schools. That if some minorities are put in play, the students won't be as, you know, uh, our black children will have somebody to look up to. Because some of our black children are sitting around and they feel like they will never be able to be a teacher. If they looking at or looking around and, and they thinking they will never be able to be an administrator because they are not seeing none of us in the plane. And, and so if we, uh, you know, are present in some of these jobs, these children, they respect just that color of that skin to where they attend their business if they see one of us. Because most of the time we know everybody. Most of we know all of their parents that are here. You know, but if we are never given a chance, then we can never prove ourselves to be qualified. You know, but it's obvious that, you know, if our principals are in charge of hiring, that if we have all white principals, then we will never get no black uh, employees. And we do have diversity with our principals. Yes. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I forgot. We what we have two, three, two. Ms. Wilkerson, I, I would like to have the opportunity to have the time mm -hmm. to work on some numbers and show you of okay. what we have done in the past couple of years. There is a major, major teacher shortage. The past five years, the enrollment in education programs in colleges and universities in Georgia is down 50%. Mm -hmm. I go to job fairs, and there are more recruiters there the applicants and some of the principals that are here, I mean, I take them with me, they can vouch for that. It's very hard. So that's why we have tried to tap into folks through alternative certification that can come and teach with us. Um, I agree with you. Uh, I've been here a long time and it is always in the forefront that we need to increase minority recruitment. And not just with African American, but Hispanics. If you look at our Hispanic population, we do not 
have the number of teachers that we need. But this year, I looked, we've hired six this thing this year. That's, that's wonderful. And I'm glad they're going into education. Um, I do think with our teacher apprenticeship program at Coffee High School, we have a new teacher from the middle school that's moved up. She was a teacher apprentice when she was in high school. So I think it's wonderful that she's going to be trying to grow our own at the high school level. South Georgia College, since they're going to have their early childhood special ed program, that's going to help us tremendously. They have their four-year degree program in biology. Colby Patton, who we recognize tonight, he came to see me when he graduated from South Georgia. I went and spoke with all those students the other day that are moving up into their junior year and talked to them about being a teacher. And there were different nationalities in there, so I hope I reach them. Um, I welcome your help in this, but I, I have to say, we do hire minorities. We do. Do we have as many as we should? No. But a lot don't go into education initially. Well, no. we have a lot of them um, that are uh, a lot of whites that are not in education, but they got an education, a job. You know, so, you know, it, it's not that, you know, you just have so many that's in education, so that's why you have more, you know, whites that are, that are teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of them that's not in education, right. but mm -hmm. they have these jobs. So that's what we're looking for, that just because that we didn't, uh, go into education okay. that we still can qualify to get our education degree if we given a chance to get on you know because there's a lot of people that I wish that they would have the nerve to come out to these meetings and stand to say that I graduated from Georgia and I didn't even get an interview here at Coffee County. Well, I wish they would come. You know I wish they would call me. Some of them say they have called, but you know, like I said, I wasn't there to where we can be on two way or anything like that. So I'm just repeating what they say, and I'm not saying that you are lying because, you know, I'm just saying that that's what they told me, mm -hmm. you know. So, but um, and and they also told me that they applied for the job and just didn't get. I had several of them here tonight to stand up, but just because of the fact that we didn't have. Um, they were late coming in for work and didn't sign the participation order participation that they couldn't stand up tonight to see it. So we have a lot of them that um, have jobs at other places now and they don't want to take the risk of coming out and standing up to where they might get somebody to call in and say, you know, they came here arguing about a job that they applied for five years ago and they didn't get it, so you might have a turister on your job. You know, and I do know that we are labeled, some of us, as turisters because I am. You know, just because of the fact that I might have a question about why are there not in minorities here. You know, so it doesn't mean that I am a turister, that I am trying to cause conflict. I just want equal opportunity. I know we're not going to get 50-50, but we shouldn't have 97-3. You know, so we, 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 we need, you know, to, to get on board and and how make it, um, you know, just, just go to our principals and say we got to have some minorities. Give them a chance. Just give us a chance. I'm not asking you to pick anybody off the streets, you know, because you know, um, I, hey, I, my children are out there. My grandchildren are out in these systems. And I want them to have some quality education. You know, but just because of the fact that we might have didn't go into education, it doesn't mean that we are not qualified. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we are not quality. We are quality. Some of the best we teachers qualified. we've hired were not, they didn't go through a traditional route. They went out in the private sector. And they have brought a lot to the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, the past couple of years during the teacher orientation, it can be 50% of them sitting there are non-traditional. Um, those that are in TAP right now, they're all non-traditional. Um, you know, 
So again, I would like to ask if I can have some time and I can run some reports or sit down with you and maybe look back over the past three or four years and show you what we've done and those folks that are in the district working now as a teacher. Um, and those that said they didn't get a job or they, they called me and didn't hear from me, I try to call everybody back. So if you'll ask them to call me again, I would like to bring them in and talk with them. I have done community outreach the past couple of years through the chamber um, after hours and talk about what it takes to be a teacher. And I take uh, teachers with me that have gone the traditional route and the non-traditional route of every race. And the last time I did it, three people showed up. So, you know, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to reach out. Um, having our job fair has, has been successful, but this past year I was disappointed in the turnout and we advertised and advertised. But from the response when I go to colleges to recruit, they need to do a better job of encouraging folks to go into education um, because it, that's where we used to find a lot, but we don't that much anymore. And sometimes our um, confidence has been taken from us. You know, because um, if, if we apply several times and, and don't get a call, then that now is like a confidence that, you know, they telling different ones that ain't sensing you applying, you ain't gonna get a job here at Coffee County. You know, and, and my district often complains to me about, we are paying for uh, a white school system. You know, we pay taxes as well. Why we are not out there? You know, so it, it, it does, you know, with me just sitting here looking, um, mm -hmm. it seems like that we are paying for um, a white school because everybody, you know, um, has the jobs that they, you know, want around here. And, and, and a lot of times these jobs, there's a problem because somebody might have a job, but then they go to cry and say, that ain't the one I want, I want that one. And then they'll start enough racket in here to, they get together here and, and get them the job that they want. You Are know, you talking about we can't teaching even just get or every job. Just system. every job, you know, teaching. Uh, but, you know, and I noticed that um, after the ball games, after, um, you know, because they used to think, well, God, we don't have any blacks nowhere around here. But then after the Trojan basketball games, I mean, they come out like rats. I see all the blacks. I say, okay, that's what they're cleaning up, you know. So, um, you know, I just think as a, a member of this board, you know, it, we all can work together. Uh, and, and I just think that we do need to make this uh, a priority to make sure that we get some minorities on this job, Hispanics as well. I'm not just saying, speaking on just blacks. You know, I will speak up, like I tell everybody every time, you know, I love everybody. I'm just not just blackish. You know, I want to be whitish. That's it. And so, and um, you've explained this. I, I just heard it um, differently that, you know, they are hiring who is sent to them. They interview who is sent to them. I have never sent. So um, I know as far as, you know, not, well, um, not, Per se, it's like, you know, hey, I'm Senator Tanya Howard, you know, but it was just that when you spoke about that, if you had came to me earlier, I could have made sure you got in. So, yeah, I took that as maybe it, it is. The, that um, isn't what I meant when I okay. said me. I was speaking for the school district. Okay. I apologize. For that. But, um, after the meeting, I'd like to give you some literature about teaching that you could share with those folks that are interested in my information's on it, and if you would encourage them to call me, I mean that sincerely. We're meeting with somebody tomorrow about this. So. And one other thing, mm -hmm. do you how about, do you um, go to the uh, black colleges in Fort Fort Valley? Fort Valley, Savannah uh, State, Albany, Albany State. Okay. Um, so you're visiting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Clayton. Thank you. Good job, Ms. Clayton. <laughs> I will point out in our strategic plan under focus area three, people and culture, we do have strategy three and uh, it states
states expand opportunities for innovative staffing and minority recruitment. So that is a, 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 a something we're working on in our strategic plan. It's purposefully in our strategic plan to work on minority recruitment. Right. Next on the agenda, I would ask the board that we move to an executive session to discuss uh, personnel and the superintendent's evaluation. <coughs> and real estate. There's a motion. Make a motion, Mr. Jones. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Exit executive session. All right. Board members, do I have a motion for us to exit executive session? I move we exit executive session. Thank you, Mr. Preston. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Very good. Release? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would ask the board to approve the personnel list as presented, but I will ask the board to pull number five and number 62. I move we accept the recommendation of, I'm sorry, Ms. No, no, you can run it. Do I have a motion to accept the recommendation as presented with pulling number five and number 62? Uh, uh, yes, I move that we accept that recommendation. Those are for separate votes. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't make that clear. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. I would ask the board to approve number five. We have a motion to approve number five as presented. I move that we accept the recommendation of uh, number five on the personnel list. Thank you, Mr. Corpson. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a comment. Okay. Uh, I believe in promoting from within. And we advertise positions. And we have qualified people in our system for a position. I think they should be given a little consideration for being local and being in our system for a while over someone that's never been in our system from out of town. That's just, that's the way I feel. I like to promote our own people. That's the reason they work here. A lot of them is to be able to move up and then, especially when they qualify just like the other ones. So, that's one way they go. Thank you for that okay. clarification. Uh, a motion and a second. All in favor? Opposed? Opposed? I would ask the board to approve number 62. I have a motion to accept number 62. I move that we accept the recommendation for number 62. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? We, we, we hired a local man. We hired a local man. Right. Thank a, you for making that high. point. <laughs> All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. May I have a vote count on number five? It's three, two. Mm -hmm. How much? Three, two. Okay. Let me clarify. All right. All right. Uh, at this point, that's all the personnel for tonight. And uh, board members, that's, that's the business that we have. I will adjourn our regular meeting for August 22nd, 2019. But I will call on any board members that may have comments they would like to make. Make one. We had a uh, childhood cancer awareness group here tonight. Uh, September was a big month for them. We got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of ways to get active and help them out. Uh, none of y'all be into some of their stuff that they do, like the live auction and the silent auction. I mean, that's that's a pretty good cause to get behind. It's also an enjoyable experience. I know we've been to the uh, live auction several times, and it's a funny, 
So, you know, get out there and help support them, and, and let's see what we can do to help that, that organization who's, you know, doing a lot for this community. Yes, sir. Thank you. One more comment on that personnel. Uh, another reason we could hire local uh, for less money than we pay ourselves a good bit less. So that's just another reason we could hire them. All right. Any other comments, board members? Just uh, tomorrow we're traveling to the away game. Um, we've had a good start to the first of the year, but everybody be careful traveling over to Brunswick. It's here on the Trojans. Listen to the new radio station. Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, well, not new. It is it the like fall, it. so uh, it's that time of year. Go Trojans. So, that's all I have. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.